In tonight's reading, we will see just how powerful God's plan is. Welcome back to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Unionville, Michigan, on this Tuesday, the 23rd of May, in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm glad you can join us as we end our day with God's Word and prayer. This is now week 21, day 2. Week 21? Yes, week 21, day 2 of reading through the New Testament in 2023. And that brings us to Acts chapter 13. Uh, so the gospel has now gone out not only to the Jews around the world, but also to the Gentiles. Uh, and the church has begun to wrestle with what that means for their daily lives. Are the Gentiles, for example, expected or should they be expected to live by the Old Testament laws or even just by the covenant of circumcision, which of course predated the law of Moses. Uh, that's a whole different topic, but um, what does that look like in practice? And uh, they've already begun to address that, uh, affirming that both Jews and Gentiles are set free from those requirements. Um, and now, here in chapter 13, they begin to, to reach out. They be begin to do more deliberate mission work, and so we will comment on that as we go. Acts chapter 13. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, a lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had John to assist them. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they came upon a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, a man of intelligence, who summoned Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the magician, for that is the meaning of his name, opposed them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, You son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, full of all deceit and villainy, will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And behold, now the, land, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and unable to see the sun for a time. Immediately mist and darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking people to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had occurred, for he was astonished at the teaching of the Lord. Now Paul and his companions set sail from Paphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia. And John left them and returned to Jerusalem, but they went on from Perga and came to Antioch in, in Pisidia. And on the Sabbath day they went into the synagogue and sat down. After the reading from the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent a message to them, saying, Brothers, if you have any word of encouragement for the people, say it. So Paul stood up and, motioning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and you who fear God, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt, and with uplifted arm he led them out of it. And for about forty years he put up with them in the wilderness, and after destroying seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance. All this took about four hundred and fifty years. And after that he gave them judges until Samuel the prophet, then they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, 
a man of the tribe of Benjamin for forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king, of whom he testified, and said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. Of this man's offspring, God has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus, as he promised. Before his coming, John had proclaimed a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John was finishing his course, he said, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. No, but behold, after me one is coming, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. Brothers, sons of the family of Abraham, and those among you who fear God, to us has been sent the message of this salvation. For those who live in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they did not recognize him, nor understand the utterances of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, fulfilled them by condemning him. And though they found in him no guilt worthy of death, they asked Pilate to have him executed. And when they had carried out all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are now his witnesses to the people. And we bring you the good news that what God promised to the fathers, this he has fulfilled to us their children by raising Jesus. As also it is written in the second psalm, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And as for the fact that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption, he has spoken in this way. I will give you the holy and sure blessing of David. Therefore he says also in another psalm, You will not let your Holy One see corruption. For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid with his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised up did not see corruption. Let it be known to you, therefore, brothers, that through this man forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you, and by him everyone who believes is freed from everything from which you could not be freed by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest what is said in the prophets should come, about, should come about. Look, you scoffers, be astounded and perish, for I am doing a work in your days, a work that you will not believe, even if one tells it to you. As they went out, the people begged that these things might be told them the next Sabbath. And after the meeting of the synagogue broke up, Many Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who, as they spoke with them, urged them to continue in the grace of God. The next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began to contradict what was spoken by Paul, reviling him. And Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying it was necessary that the word of God be spoken first to you, since you thrust it aside and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life. Behold, we are turning to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of God. And as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was spread throughout the whole region. But the Jews incited the devout women of high standing and the leading men of the city, stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and drove them out of their district. 
but they shook off the dust from their feet against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Thus far, Acts chapter 13. So this was a longer reading, so we'll make the comments brief today. You're welcome. Uh, one of the things I think is really interesting here is kind of using the analogy, is the way that the Word of God is spreading. And to use an analogy that I may have brought up in the past, it's amazing to see it spread much like seeds in our world. Uh, there are seeds that are blown along by the wind, like the dandelion, for example, and are spread that way all over, and you know how dandelions can spread, of course. There are other, other seeds that stick to animals or stick to you as you're walking through the forest, for example, those, those burrs that catch on your clothing, and then they fall off in other places. And then, of course, there are seeds that are planted. Well, we've seen all of those ways of spreading the gospel at work here in the book of Acts. We saw it, the gospel blown along like seeds on the wind as uh, on the day of Pentecost, as the believers, as the believing, uh, excuse me, as the Jews who had gathered for the festival of Pentecost went back to their homes, and it was blown along, in a sense. Or we might also describe that, actually, that would probably be described better as those burrs that stick to you. That's probably a better description. Then we also saw it blown along by the persecution that drove believers out of Jerusalem, and of course they took the gospel with them as they spread to new places. Now, we see that seed of the gospel planted very deliberately by Paul and Barnabas through active, deliberate mission work. So we could focus on the, the acts of the people involved, but the bottom line is the testimony of the way that God used all of these different circumstances, all of these different people, all of these different means to cause his gospel to cause his church to spread around the world. At everywhere, that message of Jesus Christ risen from the dead was proclaimed and showed its power in one place after the next. Let's close with Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. May your holy Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right, as always, thank you for joining us as we end our day with God's word and prayer. God willing, we will see you at the same time tomorrow. In the meantime, God's blessings on your night.